Hey everyone, Robert here, author of Expansion Mastery, the practical guide to living a fully engaged life. Are you ready to start living life to the fullest? Are you ready and willing to transform yourself and your life from ordinary to extraordinary? Then grab your Zabuton, light your favorite incense, and let's get to it. Welcome, my friends, to the Fully Engaged Life. Welcome back to the show, everyone. Today, I would like to get started by making sure that you have visited the new website, www.expansionmastery.com. Make sure you go there, check that out. Grab that new revised and expanded edition of Reinventing Yourself Through Realignment. It's an excellent, excellent ebook. And of course, you can get an autographed copy of Expansion Mastery while you're there. You know, it's encouraging to me because I'm starting to hear more and more people talk about vibration. More specifically, I'm starting to hear people actually talk about living in accordance with vibration. And these aren't spiritual gurus or anyone really engaged in any specific type of organized practice, they're people that are waking up. They're people that are starting to realize that it's all about our vibration. Just this morning, I was hearing people talking about eating high vibration foods and how processed foods and heavy sugared foods are low vibration. It's like, yes, I've been teaching that. I've been teaching that for years. And it's so good to start to hear people talking that way. They're talking about eating high vibration foods that allow them to maintain a high vibration. They're talking about living in a way that allows them to live with a high vibration. And they're actually beginning to feel it, to become aware of it. This is so exciting. I hope you're one of them. I hope you are one of these folks that are learning that the vibration is immensely important. And when we live in accordance with vibration and we are able to hold a high vibration, that we are living a good life. We are living fully engaged, right? Remember, think about it. You can't lie well, you have a high vibration. You can't call people names and hold uh, discontent and hatred in your heart when you have a high vibration. Just like you can't drink sugary drinks like sodas and maintain a high vibration. You can't eat processed junk food or fast food and maintain a high vibration. See, it's all about our lifestyle. And what we surround ourselves with and what we put into ourselves. The same goes for what you watch, right? If you're watching television shows or Netflix or whatever, and it's all this murdering and zombie stuff and all these other things, that's very low vibration. You can't hold a high vibration while you're watching that sort of thing. It, it will affect you if you're paying attention to it. It's the same with music, right? If you're listening to very low vibration music with a heavy bass and violent lyrics and disrespectful lyrics and things, right? It's all low vibration. I've taught this so many times, and I'm so thrilled to start hearing people out there talking about this sort of thing, and I truly hope that you are one of them. Live with a high vibration, my friends, because that is the ultimate key to living a fully engaged life. So I'm going to help you. I'm going to help you start living with a high vibration, and I'm going to give you some practices. And these practices are coming right out of the Expansion Mastery book. I'm going to start to go through these just to go over these practices with you and maybe expand on them a little bit. Something to help you to raise your vibration, and then through the continuous engagement of these simple, practical practices, you'll be able to live with a maintained high vibration. 
So in many traditions, heaven comes first, right? If you've read my book, you understand heaven, earth, and humanity, or heaven, earth, and being. And heaven comes first. Why? Because that is the foundation. That is from which everything else is created. So it starts with the groundwork. So what we do in the Expansion Mastery program is create the foundation. And we use this by getting in touch with the universe with things that could be considered closer to heaven, right? Which is why a lot of uh, monasteries and temples and things are built up on mountains, on the side of mountains and peaks. It's not just for the view, which is extraordinary because I've visited many of these. It's because it gets people closer to what they're calling heaven. And of course, heaven here is not a religious place that I'm referring to. I'm referring to the heavens, such as the universe, uh, the source, the ultimate energy field, right? So this is what it is. So let's take a look at uh, a practice. And this is the first practice. And these things are meant to be practical and simple, yet they're incredibly profound, especially in the way we live today. The first one is simply observing the night sky, mindfully observing the night sky, I might add, while at the same time, you employ what we call the standing silver strand posture. This is an incredible place to start and so important. It's a, it's a foundational exercise for all of our spiritual practices. And it's simple. All you have to do is go outdoors in the evening and look up. Look at the stars. Remember when you were a child how you used to lie on the grass and just fold your arms underneath your head and stare up at the stars at night in wonderment. We are not supposed to lose that. We are supposed to keep that even as we get older. This is a practice my wife and I still do. In the evenings, we go out on our deck because we're up on a mountain, not super high, but we're up on a mountain, and we go out on the deck And we assume the correct posture, we invoke the silver strand, and we observe the incredible beauty of the night sky. We look at the stars, the moon, and just draw our attention upward while we hold this posture. This alone is a wonderful way to begin releasing the stress of the day. We go out, we take a few deep breaths and just relax. I put my arm around her. Maybe we have a glass of wine or a glass of iced tea. And we just take time to stand out there. Sometimes we talk. Sometimes we don't even talk. We just stand there engaged in this sort of practice. You can feel all of the stress of the day just draining right out of you. And... When we're performing the exercise, we just remain quiet and we observe our own thoughts. And we don't judge these thoughts. We just observe so we can monitor what the mind is doing if we need to work on something. Um, We can see our state of mind. Do we need to uh, go back into this kind of practice or just continue with meditation? So it gives us a chance to reflect on what the mind is doing and the state of that. It gives us a chance to reflect and raise our vibration after a hard day's work. And in my book, I include some tips about reconnecting to understanding our environment by being able to read the sky. You can get a handle on what the following day's weather is going to be by the way the sky looks at night. This is something that we have forgotten because we just now rely on a cell phone, but those things are not always accurate, are they? And When we do that, it disconnects us from nature. And as human beings, we are meant to be connected to nature. And this is one way we can reclaim that connection to nature and maintain our humanity. Taking responsibility for ourselves and our lives through the skills that we develop instead of on tech that may or may not be correct. And then we stand 
straight, with good posture. And we connect to this silver strand. Some people may know it as the golden strand or the golden cord. Or There's a, about a million different names for this practice. I like the sound of the silver strand, especially because when I do it at night, you've got the silvery light of the moon and the stars. When you perform this exercise, it doesn't require you to be up on a mountain somewhere. You can be in your backyard, you can be in a field, you can go to a park on the beach. It's simply walking outdoors. And if you can, be barefoot. Be barefoot in the grass. If not, that's okay. But at least walk outdoors where you can see the night sky. Now, when you have less light pollution, you get a much much better show, don't you? So that's always nice to do as well. One of the best places for this, for me and my experience, has been in Bodega Bay. My wife and I got married there, and we stayed way out in the country at an extremely beautiful Spanish villa. It was wonderful. And We walked outdoors at night, and oh my goodness, the stars were just twinkling so bright. You could see the Milky Way. It was amazing. That was the absolute best place I've ever viewed the night sky. When I was younger and lived in Upper Michigan, because it's so sparse uh, up there, it was very easy to go to places to get a great show as well, because it's just so dark. There's very little light pollution, and that's what it takes to be able to see the night sky. So find a place, maybe find a special place for you. Even if you don't visit there all the time, that's okay. Okay, so this practice is made to be very simple, very practical. I mean, how many times do you find people that just after dinner in the evening, they just take a stroll around the backyard or they just go out on their deck and sit for a little bit? This is very natural for us as human beings to want to do this. It is how we decompress from the day's activities. So I recommend setting aside at least five or 10 minutes, and if you can, each night, at least as many times a week as you can, and you want to do this right before you go to bed. But if you can't, do it whenever is convenient for you. It doesn't matter. Make sure that you're, you're, you're putting the phone away. Don't take it with you. Don't, don't even turn it off. Don't put it in your pocket. Don't put it on vibrate. Leave it in the house. Do yourself a favor, get away from the radiation those things emit because it's messing with your electromagnetic field. See, if we want to connect to the electromagnetic field around us, we have to stop carrying these gadgets that mess with that, right? So leave that in the house, you know, forget the TV, the video games, the computer, all that stuff. Just walk outdoors. Try to avoid being on pavement if at all possible. But if it's not possible, that's okay. At least it's better than not doing the the practice. And then take a moment to breathe and relax and look up, drinking in all of nature's beauty, all of that heavenly beauty up there. And when you do this, set aside some time to be very quiet. If someone else comes outdoors, you can talk with them, but make sure that you're quiet while you do the actual practice. This way, you can observe your mind and your thoughts and what's going on and get, a, get an idea of what's going on in your mind. Remember, don't judge them. Just observe the nature of the mind and how it produces a thought. The thought will arise. The thought is there, and then it it goes away, right? It rises. It's there for a moment, and then it falls away and gives rise to a new thought. This is a very important process to be able to observe for yourself. Now, once you've quieted down the mind and connected to everything you see above you, Think about it. What do you discern from it? Does it look or feel like rain is coming? Is the sky bright and clear or is it covered in clouds? Really observe. And if you can, read it. But even if you don't understand how to read the sky, I would recommend learning how. But if you can't, at least make the observation of what it is. Again, don't judge it, whether it's cloudy or clear. One is not good, one is not bad. It just is. Just allow it to be what it is without judgment. Now you're going to make sure that you 
stand with your feet parallel to one another and stand as comfortably as you can without your feet being too far apart. And there's a specific reason for this that's important. Okay, We want to make sure that the entire bottom of our feet are connected to the ground. Make sure you're not rocked back on your heels. Make sure that your knees are not locked and that your hips are and ankles are aligned. You should have your shoulders aligned over your hips and your hips aligned over your ankles with your knees slightly bent. Make sure that you relax all of the muscles, especially your abdomen and lower back, while keeping your back straight. Allow the chest to relax and sink in slightly. Don't stick your chest out as done in military exercises or uh, by those that are exercising uh, a display of ego, right? Let the chest sink in just a little bit. Make sure that your neck is straight. And remember, you do this by feeling this strand pulling up on the, the top of the head, at the crown of the head, and then just slightly pushing back the jaw so that you can feel your neck become straight. This is a very important point that is often overlooked. If your neck is craned, then the silver strand isn't going to be effective. Now you're going to let your shoulders relax and hang naturally, keeping your arms by your side, with your fingertips pointed down towards the ground. And what you're going to do is we're going to open the spine here. Okay, this is the strand within the physical body. So what we are doing is we have a, a partial physical strand and a partial energetic strand. So we're going to look at the spine as the physical strand and then the energy uh, such as in the uh, spinal fluid that's going through it. And then what goes up from our crown into the sky, into the universe, is the energetic aspect of this. So this is one way to look at it. So with a physical cord, what we want to do is make sure that we feel as though we are being lifted by a string tied into the top of our head. Okay? And at the same time, we want to very slightly, very slowly and gently tuck our tailbone, tuck our sacrum. Okay? What this does is it uses the, the head and the, the sacrum to stretch our body, decompressing our spine, and, and allowing the energy to flow in between the vertebra of the spine. This also puts our spine in a very straight position. And this is one of the things we need to have in place to activate this particular practice. So you want to make sure you do that. Now, you know if you get it because you'll start to feel a little lighter on your feet. You won't feel quite so heavy. Now, it's at this point where we're going to rock ourselves gently forward onto the balls of our feet. The heels are still on the ground, but there's more weight on the balls of our feet now. Now, if you tuck the sacrum correctly and you get your mind out of the way and just let the body respond to that, what happens when you tuck that sacrum a little bit is it causes the knees to bend and it draws your body weight forward onto the balls of the feet naturally. You don't even have to try. But in the beginning, your body may not be that responsive. You may be trying to control your body more from the head than the body itself. So um, if you need to, then just rock a little bit forward, okay? just a little bit, not to where you're on your toes or teetering or anything. The heels are still on the ground, but you feel that weight. This is connecting us because remember, the higher we're going to reach into the universe, the more we need to be grounded into the earth. So this is what's allowing us to root and ground ourselves. And while the focus of this exercise is on expanding upward, we cannot neglect the incredible importance of being grounded first. This is a step that so many people forget, and this is one of the reasons why they feel a bit uh, airheaded or spacey after doing such practices, because they're either forgetting or neglecting to ground and root themselves, or they're failing to do so effectively. Now, if you can, while keeping the head position and moving the eyes independently of the head, this can be a challenge <laughs> for some in the beginning, we want to roll our eyes up without moving our head to look at the stars. If you want to be very specific with this, put your attention onto the North Star. 
feel this silvery, bright light flowing through your spine. And once this becomes comfortable and you're standing there really enjoying the stars, really feeling this in your body, feeling this incredibly tranquil feeling, this state of well-being, very slowly and gently bring your hands out to the sides and point your fingertips up towards the sky, up towards the stars. Hold them there if you can and breathe there three to nine times. With every inhalation, you are drawing this heavenly energy down into your crown through that strand, down in through your fingertips and arms, down into your body and just filling yourself with that, bringing it all the way through the body. Feel any sense of stress and tension melt away down into the ground. And don't worry, you're not hurting the earth. And we're bringing this heavenly energy down through uh, our body, this chi down through our body, and then down into the earth. The earth is built so it recycles this energy. It wants that heavenly energy. And what we're doing is just purging ourselves, making ourselves a conduit between heaven and earth. And then with every exhalation, just think of reaching up. Feel your spine go up a little farther. Feel as though your arms are stretching a little farther. Feel as though you're reaching up. You're you're being elongated up. And that energy from the earth is then coming through your body, through the strand, and going up into the universe. So you are a direct conduit between heaven and earth. And this is the place of the human being. Remember to take three to nine breaths, whatever you're able to do, and then slowly allow your arms to come back down to your sides. If you can't hold them up there the whole time, that's fine. Or if you have some sort of uh, limitation to where you can't really raise your arms up comfortably that way, that's okay. Just leave them at your side. Uh, the, The head and the spine is the most important thing. Those are just going to improve it a little bit for you uh, if you're able to do that. And then what I recommend is just standing there and relaxing for another at least three breaths, just standing there, relaxing, and then pay attention to just how great you feel, how fully relaxed you are, and how now you're ready for a good night's rest. Getting enough rest is incredibly important in regards to living a fully engaged life. And this was a lesson that took me a long time to learn. And I learned it the hard way. Hey, I would go days at a time without sleeping. I would get maybe an hour here, an hour there, maybe a couple hours here at most. And I was on the go again. I would not recommend that. Um, Instead, we want to make sure that we do things to enhance our ability to get a good night's sleep, allowing our body to fully regenerate, rejuvenate so we are ready to go the next morning with a far healthier mind and body. Once you get good at this, you could even do this as a walking practice if you like, as long as you're capable of holding the silver strand, holding those alignments while you walk. You can do this as a walking practice too. So if you're a little bit more advanced, if you're used to working with something like this, or if you just got some energy and you want to try something different, you can do it as a standing practice or you can do it as a walking practice. And please do not allow the seemingly simple nature of this to to throw you, to fool you. This is a powerful exercise, especially in the, the current environment that we live And we need to do this. Instead of sitting on the sofa and watching the news or watching some other low vibration program and then trying to go to bed, mm, that's not helpful. We want to go out. We want to get back in tune with nature. We want to relieve all the stress of the day. We want to decompress, literally physically decompress as well as mentally decompress and enjoy some beauty. Enjoy the beauty of the world, uh, of what we get to enjoy here in this lifetime of this grand adventure. This is the nature of expansion mastery. We use natural, practical practices, and these things are all incorporated into spiritual systems. Hey, this is not fluff. This is not just some made-up, foofy exercise to make you feel good. 
This is one of many authentic practices from various spiritual systems. You see, it's supposed to be fairly simplistic. It's supposed to be fairly easy, some of these things. But they also have to have substance and they have to be able to yield results. I stand by these practices, but you are the the one to judge it for yourself. You have to get out there and feel it for yourself. You have to determine whether you're gaining benefit from it or not. And I truly, truly hope that you are. And you can see that a lot of the dogma and different things is just unnecessary. We don't need that in these practices. These practices are meant to reattune us to nature and all that implies. So all you have to do is remember to take a few minutes in the evening after dinner and go outside. Just simply stand there or go for a very slow, easy walk if you like. Pretty simple exercise, pretty easy. But the results are very profound. And it's just one of the things we use to put ourselves in a better position to engage our practices. So make sure that you help me out by sharing this podcast and all the other podcasts, get the show out, get real, authentic, practical spirituality into the hands of the people. We've got to keep helping people to awaken. We need to keep awakening further ourselves as well. We can't neglect our own awakening, but we still have to help others. And we can do that by spreading the word, spreading good, authentic practices, by helping people to understand what is just new age fluff that really has no bearing in anything real so they can see and then engage truthful, honest practices. So you can help this out by ordering books and giving them as gifts. You can also share this podcast. You can do the whole social media thing. Go on any social media that we have, Twitter, Facebook, uh, our YouTube channel. Leave positive comments, subscribe, like, do all that stuff. But make sure, more importantly, that we share it. That is a tremendous help, and that's how you do your part to assist me in getting this information out. Until next time, my friends, I wish you the very best in your practices and in your life. Take care.